Why? That is a pretty simple question, right? But through that question, I realized that we are not solving the right problems. Let me tell you what I mean. But first, we have to jump to the time machine. And yes, I'm a geek. Five years ago, when I was 19 years old, I was into politics. Actually, I was running as a candidate in, this, in these municipal elections, and my political career lied ahead. But unfortunately, I had no single clue how to do a good campaign. Luckily, one guy from the parliament offered me help. So one day we met in the parliament house and we sat down to the cafeteria. And the first thing he did was this. He teach me to draw circles. No, not really. But he said that, Iga, you are in the middle of the circle and you have to know why you are running for the office. Because when you know it, you can convince your closest friends, your family, your girlfriend, boyfriend, your dog. And what happens is that they will start speaking to their friends and families and so on. So the trick is to know your why and to start from the middle. So I was astonished about this so simple framework. So what I did is what I usually do when I get excited started Googling. So pretty quickly I found out that, wait a minute, this guy, the politician, is a copycat. This guy here is a Simon Sinek. His TED talk is one of the most watched speaks in the TED. And he's preaching exactly the same thing. Start with the why, move to the question how, and then to the what. That's the best way. So what's the big deal here, in here? Why well, I'm talking about the why? So the whole this idea of the why question, guiding your internal motivation, changed how we think. It even changed how organizations think. But let's come back to this soon. A Couple of years later, I decided to put politics to the side and got more and more interested in technology and entrepreneurship, as many of you guys here. I had this chance to work in this rapidly growing technology company with all the perks you can imagine. Free dental care, good salary, stock option programs, chance to work abroad, and of course, free beer in the fridge every time. So I was, I was already about to walk to the interview when I did not ask myself why, but what? What is this company actually doing and what I'm going to do there? And I didn't get it. What's the point? in this. And then I realized that all of this fancy stuff like free food or stock, stock option programs, I added more reasons to my why I would work in there. But during the same time, I became blind, blind to recognize what the company is actually doing. Actually, I didn't even want to see and understand what the company is doing. I didn't take the job. I decided to follow my gut feeling. But until this year, this thing haunted me, and I decided to go back to those feelings. And I learned two things I want you to share with you. Firstly, we seem to be very obsessed how things are done, but not what we're actually doing. We're producing platforms and apps that doesn't really produce any value and we are wasting a lot of resources and brain power to things that we don't need. Fun fact. In the Silicon Valley, there is a place called Y Combinator. It's a place where the most brightest minds of startup people go, and they get help for 10 weeks with their idea. Last summer, there were, were 108 companies. And now I want you to guess number in your head, how many of these companies were solving the biggest issues we have in the world, like poverty, climate change, things that we heard from the max speech? The correct answer is 17. 17 companies were solving the biggest issues we have in the world, and I think this is nuts. And it's happening 
around the globe. More interesting is what causes this? Well, obviously, there is many reasons, but one is this, the Batman. No. We, see, we seem to think that going forward in our career and doing good is some sort of a trade-off, that they are not on the same path. But is it so on your own field of expertise? And if it is, could it be changed? What I think that it's something we have learned and something what we value that is a great work currently. The thing is that we as Western people, many of us here today, are responsible of this. We have the opportunity to choose where we use our time and where we choose to work. And what I want to really give you an easy call to action, what to do. This is a really abstract idea. I don't know what, where to start. But one thing that inspired me is this project. And they're building a community for young doers who want to talk about this issue. I recommend you to check that out. But if there is two things I want you to remember of my talk, it's not that, that I try to look like a Steve Jobs. First, don't let sleek offices, fancy mission statements, or jobs that are currently socially acceptable in your own bubble to overrun something you really care of. And secondly, next time you're applying for a job, ask yourself why, but also what. Because we are all shaping the world, so let's do it with power to do good. Thank you very much.